Um, if our partners are including um, lecture capture material and making that available for the CADARM learning portal, are there any particular IPR issues that they should be considering? Yes, um, there are some that are in common to all types of materials, that is, uh, you're bringing other people's stuff. So quite commonly as part of a lecture there will be images up on the PowerPoint perhaps, or blocks of text, or recordings, audiovisual recordings. And again, there still has to be a consideration of the fact that you're showing other people's stuff. Um, now, we've made progress with the CLA, the Copyright Licensing Agency, with regards to stuff going up, um, which is text, and they're quite happy that that sort of use is covered by the CLA licence. Um, but one has to be careful when including um, more sensitive images, sensitive in terms of their commercial value, for example. Um, you would want to be releasing on YouTube a particular chart, say a psychology chart, which is known to be a, a commercial um, instrument that the publisher is licensing for use. So, so I thought about what goes into it. If you are doing a lecture on Walt Disney's development, then showing a Walt Disney video and having that captured as part of it is possibly not going to be a good idea. That's, there may be a statutory exception that applies, but you're going to have to be careful because they're litigious. So, um, beyond that situation then, you have obviously the lecturer and their output. Um, the copyright in their lecture output, given that it's part of their employment, unless there's an agreement otherwise, will belong to the institution. So that's straightforward, so the institution can license that. However, um, a lecture is also probably in law, it's not been tested, but um, well, I think we can assume it is, it's a performance. And there are particular rights that go along with performances. Uh, those performance rights don't transfer or vest in any way to the institution, they remain with the lecturer. They have the right to control what happens to the recording of their performance. What institutions need to do is to get permission, um, for effectively for the academic to waive their performance right in order for the, the recording to be made and distributed. That entails working with the academic. Uh, it's, uh, it, it can mean going back even to HR and actually talking about when recruitment happens, actually letting potential new staff know that you're an institution that actually wants to undertake lecture capture. As part of the contract of employment, you'll be asked to waive your performance rights. Yeah, there can be questions with the union about that because, of course, people are relinquishing then their control over their performance. And we all know that, uh, that not every day is a, is a brilliant lecture. Sometimes it's an off day. Sometimes uh, lecture capture systems that will capture something that a uh, lecturer doesn't want to have up. Again, it's about working in partnership with the lecturer to make sure they're comfortable with it all, because in the end, they do have the right to control that. So it's a good idea to get that in writing. Uh, again, not a confrontational exercise, sliding something, you must sign that, um, but rather working with them. What fears do they have? Again, we have come across a situation where staff think the lecture capture is going to lead to them uh, being dispensed with because it's all captured on lecture. Why do we need the lecturer now? Uh, trying to get past that sort of uh, fear um, and get the permission. Uh, you want the consent uh, in intellectual property terms, but really more importantly, you want a cooperation. Okay. That's, that's really useful. Thanks very much. I might add a little bit to that then. Yeah. I mean, I know, they'll leave a little break in there is also the question of student participation in some lectures and when they, they contribute to it. Uh, there are two sides to that. First of all, data protection, the fact that uh, you may be recording students ident who are identifiable and showing where they are in what context. Um, to that extent, then, you want the students to know that it's being recorded and to give them some sort of option. And that may be an option of sitting in an area of the lecture theatre or the classroom uh, where uh, it's not being recorded. You may give them a chance to ask questions after the camera has been switched off so they know that it's not being captured. Or you may actually get them involved so they are actually part of it all and get them to agree to, to being involved. Uh, so that's part of the uh, data protection. But also they have rights in, in what they do. So you may have a class where a student has created a poem and decides to uh, read out the poem in class. Uh, again, you want to get their consent to the fact that that's being recorded and also let them know what's going to happen to it. So it's all very well being recorded, but it's also, you need to get the consent, the, the permission of the student, if that's going up on YouTube for the world to see. 
Um, so it's about being clear, thinking about what's going to happen in future, getting the permissions from all those involved, uh, doing it in cooperation, and therefore the legal issues will fade into the background. Uh, a follow-up to that then, would you, would you advise, would you advise um, to, to do that on a session-by-session session basis, or would you just ask for a blanket um, disclaimer or approval uh, or waving, wavering um, at the beginning of an academic year or, or something like that? What's the best approach? You want to uh, adopt an approach that makes sure that normal students, 95% of them, will understand what's going on. And now, uh, you can see the dangers about slipping them a bit of paper at the beginning of the year and then it never mentioned, especially if you have a lecture capture system that's built into the fabric of the lecture theatre, so not immediately apparent. Um, so uh, it may be good practice for the lecturer to remind students uh, at the beginning of a lecture that the lecture is being recorded and uh, if they have any questions they may want to leave it till after the system has been switched off, for example. Um, it, it doesn't have to be convoluted, you, you should never be passing around uh, uh, permission, uh, it's per permission forms to 150 students in the theatre for them all to sign individually. Um, that is not necessary. Uh, but yeah, again, you want to apply that test. Will the average student, uh, the averagely diligent and conscientious and, uh, and aware student understand that they're being recorded in the situation? If you can say yes to that, then whatever means you have used is the appropriate one. Okay, so an oral announcement or agreement at the beginning of the session will yeah. be sufficient? Yeah, as long as it's giving the student a real choice. Uh, to say that, um, well, uh, for example, you will be recorded in this uh, session and if you don't, uh, uh, then you're going to miss out on important material for your examination. It's not really a real choice. If as part of assessments, for example, students are going to be recorded, then that should be made known to them at the beginning of the course. Mm, okay. And um, uh, on, on that note, if a student... Um produces a video increasingly in educational institutions instead of get being asked to hand in a, a document or a, a presentation uh, we're seeing students either being asked to do presentations that might be videoed or to actually as a group produce a video yes. that's going to be assessed what's the um, implications of that the, the implication is that when the student creates the work, or the student carries out the recording, they will own the rights in that, with very few exceptions. There are some universities that attempt to get students to sign a, 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 a statement that says that the, the institution will take copyright. Uh, that is subject to a test, by virtue of some regulations, of uh, reasonableness. And if it is an unreasonable claim, then it will not be uh, permitted. So, for example, where the, the institution is putting in resources and time and, uh, and investment of, of, uh, of energy or cost in some way, or else um, there's members of staff of the institution that are heavily involved in the production, then it may be fair to take the, the, the copyright and demand that and have the student sign away those rights. For the most part, though, the student will actually retain the rights, and so it's about getting the student's permission for reuse. Again, you know, I, I would hope that... Uh, a, an institution will be able to persuade the students that that's a win-win situation to everyone's benefit and again it means engaging with the students and uh, letting them know what's going to happen to it. What we don't want is a situation where a student makes a video thinking it's for a class or an assessment but then finds it on YouTube and they didn't want that. Uh, apart from anything else it's possibly a data protection breach but they had the rights and you didn't have the rights to put it up on YouTube and so that's not a situation you want to be in. So, for example, if I, if I had a student from last year's cohort that's now left, I uh, have access to their video, um, I want to show um, its parents, uh, it's visiting day, um, prospective students are coming, I want to show them what an up-to-date university we are. Here's some examples of some student videos that were made last year. I need permission to do that. Yes. Okay. In some contexts it may be possible to imply permission in the circumstances and for the purpose that you have. Uh, but I can see examples, for example, if you were doing, um, say the course was in counselling and the video was a counselling interview which was in a very, a very emotionally charged situation, then you could see why a student might not want that used in, in future. Um, or for data protection reasons, they don't want to be associated with a particular course or situation, again they have the right to control that. 
Um, so uh, there are certain situations that if the student has made the video and put it up themselves on YouTube, no problem, you can just link mm. to that. They've already made it available. So you don't need to be going back and chasing them. If they've done it in a situation that allows you to come to that conclusion, then fine. However, um, in most situations, then you'll be, uh, uh, again, thinking about in advance, of course, the best situation was if you asked at the time the student, would you mind if I could use your students and uh, your student produced videos in future as learning uh, materials? Or to say uh, to some of them that uh, actually the ones that are best and maybe the ones that achieve a certain grade, I would like to show those as good examples of work here to promote this course. Now, would you mind if I then put it up on YouTube? Do you give me permission to do that? Or even better, get the students involved in doing it themselves. Mm. Great, thanks very much.